Like a circle in a spiral Like a wheel within a wheel Never ending or beginning Like the circles that you find In the windmills of your Visit stogiegeeks.com forward slash debonair for a list of retailers who carry debonair cigars. Buy some today and get a little more debonair. Welcome back, everyone, to the Stogie Geek Show. I'm your host, Paul Sidorian, in studio with Todd Lascola. And we've got Will Cooper on the lines via Skype. And we're going to talk about secondary cigar bands, Will. Yes, we are. And, you know, it was interesting because we kind of hit on it in the segment. We just had a great segment with Nestor and Jason, by the way, mm. um, from Miami Cigar. But, um, you know, one thing is we were talking about their Nestor Miranda collection and how they, they have ways to visually identify the cigars very easily. And, and with the Nestor Miranda collection, they, they implemented um, color. Mm-hmm. You, you know, but another but not that's not always possible based on a ba- band design. Um and suddenly when, you know, that becomes a challenge with certain lines because with certain lines, um, it's hard to identify it. Um, and a good example, and this is not the pick on, on the line by any means, but Padron 1964 Anniversary Series. <laughs> All right. I, you, know, you know, as I'm getting older, I'm sorry, it's getting harder for me to tell a natural and a Maduro apart. No, it uh, always has been. It's not just you, Will. Right. Mm-hmm. No, no. So... Why to put the guesswork into that is what I'm saying. Um, where that's where I think the secondary band it, it, there's there's a couple of uses of a secondary band. That's one of them that I'll talk about. Where I just think that would be, you know, something that would help, you know, in terms of just help promote the line better. Now, Padron may be a bad example because it's an iconic blend, but you kind of get where I'm going with yes, that. Yes. Yeah, I like the the usage of secondary bands that help me determine what the cigar is. Yes. What year was it a limited edition from? Which wrapper is it? Which particular size is it? Like that whole thing. If you can put some extra information on a secondary band, that's awesome. And I get it. It's an extra cost. It's some extra logistic, not just the cost of the band, because I'm sure that's pretty low, but the logistics of making sure that the right cigars get the secondary band and is probably uh, the reason why most people don't do that. Yeah, and double bands, double the labor, because it's two totally different bands. It may not right. be expensive to print that secondary band, but it costs just as much labor. Yes, it's sure. to put the it primary. On. Yeah, exactly. So I get it, but I do like them as a consumer. I do like the ornate factor to them. Like we were talking in between segments, Todd. It's kind of like, you know, wine or spirits or really anything that you buy. Like if it's special, it's got some extra ornate packaging. Absolutely. And the secondary band does that for me with cigars, right? Absolutely. Like if it's a special, I don't know, I've got like a uh, whiskey over there that we were sampling before. And it looks like the manufacturer's brand of whiskey, but around the bottle, it's got like a little chain and a little plaque that denotes which special blend that it is. Yes. Like, that's a secondary band in, in whiskey. Absolutely. And that's, that's really cool. I mean, we could even take it to cars, too, right? Like, the special editions of cars have the same manufacturer's emblems on it, but something a little extra, a little Absolutely. special to denote that it's a, it's a special car, a special wine, a special whatever. Absolutely. So. No, without a question. And it, like I said, in the amount of information you get off of it makes a big difference, too. It's mm. just anything that makes it easier as a consumer mm-hmm. to identify what you're interested in instead of ha- having to guess, like Will said, is that is that the natural of the Maduro? Is it, you know, is well, it a Corojo wrapper or is it, you know, Habano Especially wrapper? in cigars, you know, a lot of us collectors have at least a 1,000 cigars in our collection in Humidor, yes. right? Yes. So being able to tell which cigar is which is really important. Some of us are more diligent, and I go through phases of how diligent I am about labeling and things like that. Um, so I'll take Ziploc bags and label them with the year and the, you know, and write on them. But I don't always do that. So yeah. having I, the cigar carry some of that, I think, is important for collectors. No, no, absolutely, because I, you know. In concept, I, I always swear I'm going to do that, and inevitably, yeah. it doesn't happen. I mean, with a car, I mean. Even if you do have a lot of cars in your collection, you're going to know what each one is, yeah. right? Because you probably don't have a 1,000. Even the series collectors aren't going to have 1,000 cars, car. right? But with cigars, like, you're collecting a 1,000 of something, and being able to differentiate them is really important. Um, and not all of us are that diligent. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, 
Yeah, and then that you, Paul, you hit on this point. Um, there, are, there are some like annual releases, or you know, um, it's limited, but the annual releases in particular, and, and you know, some those tobaccos, the big selling point of them is the vintage changes from year to year. Yes, and I, re- I mean, I love what Casada just did with the Oktoberfest. They put the year on there. Um, now I, now I know what mm. year that cigar is from. And what vintage it's from, and it makes it. I, I just think it makes it really, really easy to tell. Um, with that, it gets a little more complicated. I think with a re- you can't do that with a regular production line. I get that because you you have a lot of stuff mixed in. But if something's coming out once a year, I, I can see doing that. But I, I like the band on the foot as well. Even if it's not a ribbon, if it's an actual band on the foot, because it serves two purposes. Now that can tell me what cigar it is. And it can also help protect the cigar it's on the foot. Cigar, if, because that, if something's going to go wrong in your humidor from shuffling them around, it's going to be on the foot. Uh, and I like that bend on the foot to help preserve the cigar. So it can actually serve two purposes in that uh, yeah, situation. Me, me too. And I've seen, I've seen some cigars put three bands on. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, one is the name of the line. One is maybe the wrapper. And the other one's the company name. You know, something like that. Or it's a combination. So I've seen that as well come into play. Um, and then I've just seen some secondary bands sometimes that are there more just for ornate purposes than anything. Right. That they just they just add something more to the band, so to speak. Well, and I, what I see some manufacturers do today too is they have like this gigantic band that covers the cigar, and then when you take that band off, underneath it is another smaller band that still denotes what it is. Which I think that's that's pretty cool packaging. I don't think it helps you identify the cigar in terms of a secondary band as we were talking about. But I think that's a really cool thing too. Yes. Yeah. In fact, I got one cigar I'm going to talk about in Stogies of the Week w- w- with that nice. model. Nice. I um, think it was the NJ12 we smoked is like that, right? That silver wrapping comes off, which is yep. a band for all intents and purposes, and then it has the regular yes. Illusion band, Illusione band underneath. Yeah. Right, because the silver wrap, even though it's not a band per se, in the humidor. You know that's the MJ12, but mm-hmm. if you take that off and there's no band, now suddenly when you're smoking that cigar, it's hard to identify with that cigar, which is why I like that he's got the little paper band un- under that, which makes it, you know, hey, no, now you know what you're smoking. Because I think as you're smoking this cigar, particularly if you're in a establishment or if you're putting pictures online, I think there's something to tell the story about what you're smoking. And I think that's what happened with Davidoff Puro de Oro originally when they didn't put bands on it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think that kind of they got behind the eight ball with that a little too uh, late with that. Yeah, not it, having any band is bad. It, it, it's <laughs> yeah. tough because I like the elegance of no band. Yeah. The problem is, is as you said, if you're trying to post something, you're trying to show the cigar, or even if it's in your humidor, you forget what it is. You forget what it is. You forget what it is. Um, and it's a, yeah, exactly. I've got, so I've, got, I've got some in my locker next door that are unbanded. And I'm not sure if they're the crappy ones I made last time in DR, or, the, or, yeah. or if they're one of Christian's right. cigars. Yes, Christian's one of the Ar- yeah. you know, one of the Which signatures. Which is smoking awesome right now, yeah. by the way. Yeah. One of the signatures. Well, I just can't tell. I could tell when I lit it, but well, and what I like <laughs> about what Phil Zangi does with Debonair, and he doesn't put a secondary band, but when you take off the band, it tells you the date that it was boxed. Which I like. Band, which is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So it's almost like a secondary band without the secondary band, because it gives you still gives you that information. They should, no, that's that that's. Pricey, but that's nice. You know, that's Very why I always helpful. like when I pick up boxes of preferitos. It yes. doesn't matter whether the cellos or the tubes. You always have the little tag in there. That tag in the Falto box. Falto has the same thing, right. the tag in the right. box, um, which as a retailer is a selling point. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, you also get a bo- right. box that's a year or two older. Mm-hmm. It's more popular. Exactly. Exactly. I, I like that a lot. It um. I think it's like I said, because, hey, look at this. I found this. And Paul and I have been doing a lot of vintage cigars on mm. Stogie Geek shorts. And to think how easy it would have been if we knew the vintage year of those cigars. Yeah. I tell you what, the research that Will and I had to do for some of those cigars was ridiculous. I think they we, didn't, for some yeah. of them, I think Will and I collectively found all the information that was online about those cigars, and it wasn't that much. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. they predated when people were posting, posting cigars stuff. on the Internet. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So it was very, very complicated. Now it's like I said, it's a little easier. But, but even then, if you're looking, you know, if you're kind of looking for a cigar, you know, photo wise, I think the secondary band def- definitely helps out, you know, as well. Absolutely. Cool. All right. What do you say we take a break, come back, and we're going to do our unbanded. Yep. So that was Debonair Ideal. Now, Will and I are going to talk about the unbanded smoke for this week. It was number one fifty. What was it? 
Do we one have a four, uh, one, do we have a break? Do we have to do we have to We're going to cut easy? to a commercial break and come right back. Okay, 114. Don't go far. Don't go far. Yep. Every new blend borrows from the past in the Saga Blend number 7. It is a perfect combination of timeless knowledge of traditional tobaccos and the newer balance that today's cigar enthusiasts come to expect and love in a fine cigar. Leveraging six generations of experience and tradition of the Reyes family, the Saga Blend No. 7 delivers a unique, full-flavored, medium-bodied cigar. The cigar is highlighted by a Brazilian wrapper over a blend of Central American and Dominican tobacco. Available in three sizes at an affordable price, the Saga Blend No. 7 is sure to please and bring together past and present. Brought to you by Rocky Patel Premium Cigars, the Tabacero by Hamlet Paredes, developed and blended by Cuban master of tobacco, Hamlet Paredes. This cigar is an exciting addition to the Patel family, featuring traditional and rare sizes hand-picked by Hamlet himself. Smoke Tabacero by Hamlet Paredes today. For more information, visit them on the web at RockyPatel.com and be sure to follow Rocky Patel Premium Cigars on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Experience the world through the eyes of an icon with the new Macanudo Inspirado line. Created for a global palette, Macanudo Inspirado defies convention. Handcrafted with the world's finest tobaccos, Inspirado delivers a unique international smoking experience. Find Inspirado Orange at fine tobacconists everywhere and Inspirado Black online and in your favorite catalogs. Ready to be inspired? Check out Macanudo Inspirado now at macanudo.com. Hello, is this thing on? Hey, there we are. Welcome back, everyone, to the Stogie Geek Show. This is our unbanded segment for this evening. This is unbanded. What did I say? 114? 114. 114. 114. What did you think of this cigar, Will? Oh, boy. Well, this is just a band? Okay. Yeah. Um. I didn't, I didn't look. It was sour. It was a figurato. It was a figurato, but it had a lot of sourness to it. A lot of sourness to it. Mine, um, I think some of the sourness for me, Will, in this cigar, and mine my, my didn't have a whole lot of sourness, but I see where you're going. Right. The construction on this cigar was just weird. It was weird. And I think I know what the cigar is. And in, I think I know what it is, too, and I, I like this cigar. I like so I, the I'm cigar, lo- it, but the construction has always just been weird. And a Figurato, I mean, really has to burn draw and construction it has to have those qualities that are even above and beyond a traditional cigar. Absolutely, because of the Because it's a figurato, shape. man. Yeah. Like, it starts off really small, then you have to get over the bulb, and then it tapers down. Like, the whole thing is just, it's it, tricky. It, it, I mean, very, it's like a Salomon. Very tough. Yes. Very tough. I would call it more a Salomon than a, uh, I guess it's a figurato. It's not a, a, not a perfecto like we're smoking the preferino. You're smoking a preferino now. It has a nozzle tip on it. It had a nozzle tip on yeah, it. Yeah, it's more like a Salomon, which can be tough. Um... I think they tried to underfill some of these cigars, which led to some of the voids uh, that happened with them uh, because of the shape. I think the blend is great. Um, a, a lot of dark, rich tobacco. You get some chocolatey notes, uh, but you're right. Well, there's like a s- kind of sourness component that, that creeps in in and the cigar. And it could be the combustion issue. And the I think the combustion issue definitely has there, there, plagued there was this cigar. De- yeah, there was definitely something off with this cigar where it was by halfway. I, I had to I had to put the cigar down because the sourness just wasn't bad enough, and that would make some sense putting those things together with it. I think it's uh, Nicaraguan tobaccos. Will, what's your guess on this cigar? Nic- Nicaraguan puro, I guess. Yeah. What was your guess on the actual cigar? Oh, I, I, I they're gonna kill me, but I think it was the uh, E H. The E H. Edgar Hoyle. No. Yeah. No, you don't think it was? It was. I thought it was a Tatuaje Avion. Really, I thought it was too small for it. It wasn't. Well, box there was print. a smaller release of the Avion. Yeah, there was two. Was, there's three. Three. Eleven, twelve, yeah. and thirteen. Eleven, twelve, yeah. and thirteen, which was a smaller and, one. Eleven. Yeah, and that, and that's why I wanted to. If it whatever, I mean, if it was the EH, I like the EH. I've, I've smoked them. It's a great cigar. Right. It's just like I said. Whatever happened with this particular unbanded? It, it's an isolated case. All right. Well, let's see what the unbanded for this week is. Oh, it is the Tatuaje Avion. I don't know which year. Again, we'll go back to our secondary band discussion. Yes. I don't know which what year co- it was. Wait, what's the band look like? It's a red, red, green, and... Yeah. Let's see. Wait, it's red and black. Red and black with a... So I, think it's, I think it was... No, so I think based on the size of that cigar, it was the 12. It was the 12. It was 12. Okay. I know it was the 12, only because they came from next door. 
Yeah. Is that uh, the only one you have next door is the 12? No, we have all, all okay. three. Now, now, I'll say this. I love the Avion. So I, I do, too. Like I said, I think it's a great blend. But I had more. I, I had construction issues a lot with the 11s. I remember the 11s yes. gave me the, 11, the first release were, yeah, yeah. even worse. Yeah. yeah, the 12 was one I really liked. So, like, like I said, it could have been a combustion issue. Yeah, the Avion is a cigar I'd box split most of the time. So. Yeah, no, no. Avion, especially the number 12, which is my personal preference. You like that too. It's... Um, like you said, I mean, that's a cigar I like a lot. Every once in a while, I get a little bit of a hit on those two construction-wise. Yes. Gets a, I can see where you guys would come up with a little bit of sourness, but it just doesn't seem like it's burning properly. Right, right. Yeah, because, like I said, you get those rich... Paul, you nailed it. That's what I normally... There's always a little bit of a citric component to those cigars. Yes, yes. I agree. But this one's just very overwhelming, yeah. Excellent. Well, that's the unbanded for this week was the Tatuaje Avion. Uh, I do encourage everyone to try them and find your year that you like. Um, yep. Because it, like, it, it is a really good blend. Yes, it is. It's, it's very, very different in the Tatawahe portfolio. I'm sorry. So. It's the gold, gold and red band. I'm thinking of the 13 had the red green yeah, one. Yeah, it's the gold and red band. Yes. Yeah. You're yep. correct. So with that, we're going to take a short break. Come back for our Stogies of the Week segment. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. 